Hello, this is an example of a High Stores Year 9 tracker. The key difference from Key Stage 3 is the inclusion of an indication of progress, indicating whether students are above, in line or below their school target. As in Year 8, Year 9 students receive three trackers over the course of the year. The purpose of this short clip is to help parents, carers and students read Year 9 trackers and try to decode the wealth of information within them. Here is an example of a mocked up Year 9 tracker. This is not a real student, but this tracker tells us a great deal about this student, both what has gone well and what they need to do to improve. First, let's look at the percentage attendance. Very important. Our school aim is for all students to have at least 97% attendance or even higher. This student has an attendance of 93.8% and this is a concern. Someone with below 95% attendance has missed two weeks of lessons over the year. Students with less than 90% attendance have missed an average of one day per fortnight and this is a real problem. Students need to attend to learn. Sometimes there are genuine reasons for poor attendance, a serious illness for example, but you have to be here as much as possible to learn. Next we look at late to lessons. Students should always be on time to learn. When a student is late on several occasions like this, they disturb everyone's learning. Also, even two minutes late to each lesson is an hour's lost in learning over the week. Next, what about the balance of commendation points to behaviour incidents? Commendations are awarded for extra special endeavour and, and everyone should have some. Behaviour incidents recorded on the tracker are often fairly serious incidents that have warranted a behaviour report from the class teacher or another member of staff and have resulted in a consequence. Most students in Year 9 do not have any behaviour incidents at all. So here we have a student whose tracker indicates that things are not quite as they should be. Subject information also raises a number of questions. Before we, um, before we look at the subject information, let's actually look at the end of the report. As a rough guide, Year 9 attitude to learning grades will range from 1 to 3, and they should improve over the course of the year. The average attitude learning grade for this child is 1.72. Although within the range for Year 9 students, it is low for the year group. The average for the year group is shown here as 2.32. This shows that this student's attitude to learning is low for a Year 9 student and well below the average for the year group. This is a concern. If the child's attitude to learning is lower than average for the year group and below expectations, then they really need to improve their learning behaviours. The full details of learning behaviours i.e. attitude to learning each grade, are sent home along with the tracker and we would hope that parents and carers would look through this with their child and talk about what improvements could and should be made. The Key Stage 4 attitude to learning behaviours are designed to help students build on skills acquired at Key Stage 3 and build resilience in preparation for the GCSE examinations at the end of Year 10 and 11. Regardless of a child's ability, achievement and success is directly linked to their approach to lessons and their learning behaviours. In short, a high A to L will ensure success in school and in life. Now, let's look at Adam's target grade. In this case, 5.4. This figure is based on national expectations of student progress, which in turn is based on Key Stage 2 SATS results from the end of Year 6. At High Stores, we do not view the target as a maximum grade or a limit to aspiration. It is rather an indicator of minimum expectations and something that all students and staff should work to exceed. The target of 5.4 is an average across all GCSE subjects. For example, if a student takes 10 GCSEs, to get an average of 5.4 they would need to achieve 6 grade 5s and 4 grade 6s. However, a student may have a particular talent in maths, art or drama and aim, to, and aim for a grade 7 or 8 in these subjects, regardless of their target grade. Any target is only a guideline. Now look at each subject area. In Year 9, we are still keen for students to develop their attitude to learning, 
as these underpin the skills required to succeed at GCSE. So rather than focusing on individual grades, the tracker gives information as to whether a student is above, in line with, or below their school target. As you can see from this tracker, this student is below target in English and Maths, which also corresponds to the two lowest attitude to learning scores. Are there any areas for improvement noted? If not, that does not mean there's nothing to improve. Students will know from feedback, often verbal, activities in class and tests, what they're good at and what needs to improve. But if the things they need to work on are a big worry for their learning and the good of the whole class, they'll have been noted here as areas for improvement. As we have said, we must also look at each A2L grade. As you know from Year 7 and Year 8 trackers, teachers use a best fit approach to decide a final attitude to learning score. These are often finalised following student self-assessment and discussion. The areas for improvement are also linked to aspects of attitude to learning. If we look at maths, for example, the attitude to learning grade is low, grade 1, low for the year group and below average. Engagement and effort are both listed as areas for improvement. When you look at the attitude to learning grade that goes out with the tracker, you will be able to see the behaviours that have led to this judgement and look to the higher grades to see what improvements we should see in the classroom. Looking at the areas for improvement overall, this tracker shows some clear issues. Behaviour is listed three times. This suggests that this child is not behaving as expected in some lessons and possibly causing disruption to their own learning and the learning of others. Effort and engagement both appear three times each. This suggests that this student is not really trying in lessons. For example, they are likely not starting work promptly, not completing work to a good standard, or not listening to instructions. Therefore, their work and learning is not as good as it could be. This helps to explain the lower than average A2L score. It is also useful for parents and carers to know what we use the trackers for in school. The data we get from them is invaluable. We celebrate the best and most improved attitude to learning with letters home and commendations. We also celebrate students who have no areas for improvement on their trackers. We note the lowest overall A2L and those students are mentored to help them improve. Students with a high number of areas for improvement have conversations with and support from school staff such as heads of house, the head of Key Stage 4, Mr Bedford, form tutors and others. The subject leaders talk to the teachers in their team about students with areas for improvement in that subject to plan how they can get them back on track. That might mean putting them on report, changing seats, contacting parents, swapping to another group or something else. Form tutors also talk to students about their trackers, celebrate the positives and discuss how to improve on low A2L and concerns. Finally, what if your child's tracker shows no concerns? What does that actually mean? Is it less helpful? In the recent Year 9 tracker, 164 students had one minor concern or no concerns at all. This is great. All the students are working well across all subjects. But even if there are no concerns, the attitude to learning information indicates ways to improve. Look at the criteria for the next grade up to see the learning behaviours expected. Plus, your child will know what they need to do to improve in terms of subject content and skills in each lesson. It is also worth talking to your child about the seeming best and worst subjects. Why is attitude to learning stronger in some lessons than in others? Have they talked politely to their teacher if they are unsure why they got the A2L grade on their tracker? But if you do worry that you do not know how to support your child, then please get in touch. Contact the House Office or Mr Bedford for Key Stage 4 Learning and Progress. We really want our trackers to be as helpful to you as they are to us. And we hope this has helped.